Now, I have been trying to stick to live recordings as a general principle, just because it's, it feels more honest to go, this is the kind of essentially horrible, rude things that I'm saying when I'm actually playing rather than recording, but I can consider exactly what it is I'm going to say. So, yes, yeah, so I've been hoping to stick to live recordings, and I really wanted to get a live recording of the game that got me out of the grant, which is on screen now, and onto the Sherman, which isn't on screen now, but will be hopefully tomorrow. So the bad news is that I didn't actually manage to get a live recording of the final game of the grant. But the good news is that I never, ever, ever have to play this tank again after this game. This is it. This is the final the final outing for the grant on my account. That's it. Done. No more. Um, so yeah, never have to play this again. Unless I want to start looking at the American, some of the American tanks again. At which point I'm probably going to have to suffer through the M3 Lee, but that can wait. So, for now, let's all just, you know, get together and rejoice. No more Grant. Now, the big question I'm usually faced with when it's time to sort of move on from a tank that I've been playing is, do I want to keep this tank? There are a couple of considerations sort of how many garage slots I've currently got free, what I'm planning to go and try next. And the most important one is, is it a fun tank to play? I mean, I've I've still got my BT-7, um, and I got rid of the A-20. Didn't keep the A-20. The former is a fun, you know, light little tier three tank, and the, the less said about the A-20, the better. And okay, so I've probably already wasted enough words overall over the course of the last almost month now on why I really don't like the Grand. And by all accounts, the question of whether or not I should keep it around, that you know, that's that should be a really easy question to answer. <clears throat> but if I I look back at some of the games I've played with, it, and you know, I can see that sometimes I manage to do well in spite of what I consider to be pretty serious flaws with the tank. I'm not saying th th these flaws are. Uh, you know, anything other than my perception of a tank. I'm sure someone who's really good at this tank, like, these aren't flaws, these are these are features that you've not considered. Shame on you, Mark. And, yeah, maybe that's the case, but as far as I'm concerned, there are a lot of gaping, gaping flaws with this vehicle. Anyway, so, yeah, I can see that basically sometimes I've done actually reasonably well in that, in that tank, this tank. Sorry, Grant, I've not got rid of me just yet. And it's it's almost it almost kind of makes me sad to realise that by the time I finally managed to get over kind of my knee jerk reaction on how much I dislike this tank, I mean I used to cringe basically bringing this into a game. That game where I was in a grant, I was like the only tier four, and they were like tier six, and everything else was tier five and six. Yeah, that was that sort of thing makes really makes me. Want to, want to be rid of this tank. But anyway, so, it makes me sad to think that by the time I kind of got over that, like, oh god, I hate this tank so much, oh god, it's all going to go wrong, oh god, everything is everything is ruined forever. By the time I've just about managed to get over, it's time to get rid of this tank. Because I think, I, I'll be honest, I'm still going to get rid of it. Okay, granted, aha, uh -huh, there are games where things have gone well for me. But, a lot of those I feel like I could have done equally as well in any other tank. I don't think it was a particular magical quality that the Grant has. A lot of success in this game to me still kind of comes, I mean, a lot of it comes down to sort of familiarity with the, the systems of the game and the tanks you're using and the tanks the enemy you're using. Obviously I mentioned before, I think in the Hellcat video, maybe about sort of knowing weak spots and Knowing basically where to point the gun, what to shoot at, is very important in this game. I mean, the other reason I think that this, I mean, for instance, this game goes well, is I think Karkov is a really good map. I like that it's primarily built up in urban, mostly because there's space to, like I did earlier, there's space to kind of wrap around and flank people. It's a really nicely designed map. 
the, the building's block line of sight so you can kind of rapidly redeploy and leave the enemy wandering. Essentially every sort of push you make past these sort of spokes on this on this wheel is a little risky. You've got to kind of push evenly to stop people coming around. Anyway, I'm still going to sell the ground. <coughs> I'm not going to miss it, I don't think. I'm not sure. I'm hoping that the Sherman's going to be fun and we'll see in tomorrow's video how uh, the games with the Sherman go. Obviously it'll be a stock Sherman which is... stock tanks are always difficult and I think in fact, tomorrow let's talk about stock tanks because this is one of the things that I actually get not annoyed with but needs to be discussed as well in War Thunder.